Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a little bit of odds and ends, just a few different things that went on around the farm this week. Uh, starting out here, we're in the parlor. We hired a local company to come in and pressure wash the parlor. Keeping the parlor clean is something I love to have done all the time. <clears throat> and we've quite often done this ourselves. We have a little gas powered pressure washer, but I wanted a really good clean. I wanted the walls, ceilings, everything done. So these guys came in, they had a big mobile trailer with a huge pressure washer in there, big diesel engine, and uh, they went to work and they got the parlor spick and span. They uh, gave the parlor a quick rinse, then they foamed the entire parlor, and they went back and they actually then washed the walls, and then they rinsed it again, and they foamed it again, and rinsed it again. So it took about four and a half hours for the guys, two guys to wash the whole parlor, and I was really, really pleased with the results. So yeah, you can see it's shiny like the day it was new. You guys did an excellent job. So yeah, tag along with us here and we'll uh, go about our odd jobs. Calcium boluses. 623 calves this morning. With every fresh cow gets two of these calcium boluses. You slide into this gun, just put down inside their mouth, it doesn't hurt at all. What this is doing, uh, pretty common with dairy cows, is after the calf is a thing called milk fever. They get a little calcium deficiency. So these pills have quite a bit of calcium in there. A couple other things that just kind of kickstart them, kind of give them a little boost. So yeah, every fresh cow gets two of these. Six ninety three also calved this morning. A little bit of a surprise. Twins. And another thing is our first Hereford Holstein cross. So we're excited to see that, and I was extra excited to see two in the pen this morning. We had two twin bull calves. Very very nice. And they are the cutest things in the world. Hey, little guy. You're already fed. Hey. And these are not your babies, even though you think that they are. It's a good thing we pressure washed some hutches yesterday. We pressure washed four hutches and now we need three of them. They are cute. They definitely got a bit more color markings like the Hereford. They're not quite as wild as the Angus ones. Those ones are... Hey, you're licking me here. The Angus ones are super vigorous. When they're born, they're up, they're ready to go. But if they nurse at all in the cow, then they are not interested in taking milk from a bottle from a human. And they can get kind of wild right away. These guys are a lot more chill. Now, for all of you out there who uh, like a little bit of the, I don't know what we're gonna call it, the grocer side of farming, you pimple poppers. 809 here, had this big bulge in your head for a while. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see if we can drain it. She doesn't quite know, but she's got this large abscess on here that I'm sure is bothering her, so uh, yeah. Let's just do the nasty thing and and open it up. Easy girl. Wow, that's not the nicest thing in the world, is it? Oh, gross. Ugh.
yummy. Ugh. There. At least now it'll drain a little bit. Well, you can tell that was bothering you, girl. So there's some wild turkeys that we've had in the back of the pasture. And now there's a tom out there today. his head. <laughs> the horse is freaking out. Oh, there he goes. There's the head. Oh, look at him. Look at that. Howdy. Look at what we got here. Another new puppy. What we do when the new babies are born? Put up real close as we can with the quad. So I want to see what the mom's number is because the cash thing is the same number as the mother. So this girl here is 21E. So tag, tag marker. 21E. What we'll do is steer calves will get their button tag in the right ear. Heifers in the left. It's just a way for me to distinguish them later on. A lot of guys do blue and pink, but then you have to catch the calf first to see what the sex is. Whereas I want to only do this once. I want to get in there and catch the calf once, so just use green tags. Just do a different ear to determine heifer or bull. Tag, tagger. Got a plier with the rings ready to go in here. Shot of selenium. It's there, ready to go. Go catch a calf. Lastly, okay. right here for the boys. There. All done, Mama. You can have them back. Okay. And lastly, reach in my box here. Got the calving book. I'm just write down a 21E. Calved on May 7th. Cast number is 21E. I write down the third red. It was a male calf, born unassisted. It sired by the Hereford bull. It has treatments and it weighs approximately 75 pounds. And that's how it's done. On to the next one. This is not a fun job. Spring cleaning in the barn. Over winter, the curtains are up, they get covered in dust, the ledges get full of straw. We actually want to drop the curtains today because the weather's going to be fine, nice enough. <coughs> but before we roll them up for the summer, it's nice to get that dust off of there. So, my handy dandy telescopic broom will brush all this dust off of there. Chris Elaine's going ahead of me and getting all the straw off the ledges, hoping that a few mice jump out of there and scare the crap out of her. But uh, yeah, this is uh, not fun. Whatever, not every job is fun, and it's got to get done. 
the dusty one. Well, yeah, we'll get all the dust scrubbed off here, then we'll go on the outside. There's a few lag bolts to remove, and we'll drop the curtains. Just about done. Only got a few more panels left. And it's amazing <laughs> how much more light it lets in, for sure. And just when we get it nice and bright, then we're going to lower them. Everybody enjoying the sunshine? We're on the outside now and we're going to go up here is a few lag bolts to take out. We always lag bolt the edge of the curtain every winter so it doesn't flap around in the wind because this is the north side of the barn and these curtains stay up all winter. So Crystalline's in there, she's gonna hoist me up. And we're gonna take out some lag bolts. All right, dear, ready when you are. tools. Comment below, what are you? The Walt, Makita, Milwaukee, what's your brand? I kind of have a few of both. This DeWalt with a really big battery is my favorite, but uh, I'm not a fan of the red stuff either. Or I should say I am a fan. Beautiful day for a stroll in the bucket. Crank them down now. dugout and the dugout went dry already which is not a good sign for the beginning of May that the dugouts are dry but it went dry so I moved them one over and we have this water set up here works good just the hose got a little sun faded and cracks we got to replace this hose here what we do on this side is we actually pump water out of the municipal ditch so RM of the brokery thank you for your water the cows enjoy it so yeah we swap this guy out Dropping the tools in the really cold water would be helpful. So here's the solar panel. I got the battery box. So in there there's the controls and that is where uh, the controls from the tank go into and then also for the pump. Pump goes that way if you can follow the blue cord. We'll follow it all the way. That's where it goes. This ditch is connected to the wetlands. 
just south of here. And so actually most of the time there is quite a bit of water that flows through here all, all summer long. So because it's actually kind of a tributary to the river where it ends up that way, there is actually quite a bit of water. This will rarely go dry. So it's a good spot for us to use. We can usually count on the water. So you can see the pump is held in the water there. There's the water hose and then here's the power. And then we just have it anchored here onto one of the trees just to make sure it doesn't float away if there is a big rain event and a whole bunch of water comes through here. Okay, so this is inside the battery box. We've got the two deep cycle batteries. You can see the control panel here. And we've got this one here, which is for the pill switch. And then this one here is for the pump. So as long as those two are connected and the batteries are hooked up, then it's good to go. There we go. We have water. Hose wasn't quite the right size. It's an inch and a half. I had an inch and a quarter. Made it work though. Got a small little leak, but it leaks into itself, so that's totally fine. It just leaks a little bit from there. Yeah. So it is full now. We just tripped the pill switch, but all it does now is the pill switch as the water floats up and the ball inside rolls back. It shuts off. And what it's doing there is to siphon itself back so the water will run back down the line as long as the line is sloped enough back to the pump. That way it's, uh, it's good to use until about minus five, maybe minus 10. Uh, that way the water is back so it won't freeze in the line. But hopefully we're done with those cold temps. Ground warm to have corn to plant soon. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. It's been all over the place. We've done all kinds of things. We've washed the barn, we've cleaned the barn, tagged some calves, fixed the water trough, saw some wildlife, all kinds of stuff. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching along. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more fun, and we'll see you next time.